Welcome to another episode of Sports and Discourse with Derek Stevenson. And uh, today, we're going to talk about Ben Simmons. Um, so apparently, the um, Denver Nuggets have emerged as one of the front runners to acquire Ben Simmons. And um, he's made it very clear that he doesn't plan to play another game for the Philadelphia 76ers. The bridge was burned right after last year's playoff when Ben Simmons kind of had a little bit of a meltdown. He, um, I think he just lost his confidence, and he got himself to a point where he was afraid to get fouled. He wouldn't shoot any jumpers. And uh, the, the turning point was when um, he had a wide-open layup under the basket and uh, – instead of trying to finish the play, which he probably would have been able to at least score the ball or potentially get an and one, um, he was afraid to shoot the free throw, and he passed up a wide-open layup. And uh, I think it was whenever everybody else in the organization just went, like, just dropped their head on Ben Simmons, and a lot of people came out and made some comments. Um his coach, Doc Rivers, was asked right after the game, do you think that you can win a championship with uh, Ben Simmons as one of your primary players? And um, he answered it in a funny way, and he basically said, I ain't sure if we can be a championship contending team with him out there, uh, not afraid to shoot and um, attack. And uh, I think it just kind of rubbed Ben Simmons the wrong way. And then to put the icing on the cake when they asked Joel Embiid, you know, who's obviously the best player on the team and the franchise guy, uh, he said that the turning point was whenever we wasn't able to con- convert layups under the basket or, you know, something. Uh, I might be misquoting him, but he, he made a comment sort of in that area, basically saying when Ben Simmons can't score underneath the basket, that's why we can't win. So... Ever since the playoffs, Ben Simmons has just been distant. Um, He basically just said that he's done with the franchise. And um, he, uh, his, his agent, Rich Paul, had came out and said that he's not playing for the Sixers anymore. That's done. We're moving on. And he also is so angry at the franchise that he wants his other athletes like uh, Tyrese Maxey also to be um, traded away from the franchise. Like, I think, uh, you know, he might just be trying to prove a point to show Ben Simmons that, you know, he's 100% in his corner. But um, he basically is putting it out there like he, he don't want to do any deal business dealings with that franchise anymore. And um, I feel like uh, Doc Rivers um, – I don't know, he he came out and made another comment when he was being asked about it, um, and I'll tell you what the comment is in a second, but um, first I want to say that um, I kind of feel like he's kind of taking the approach where it, it seems like he's trying to say positive things, but he always undercuts what he says, and it's like he's kind of giving Ben Simmons a slight jab. And it's making me believe that he really doesn't want to coach Ben Simmons anymore. But uh, he just feels like uh, he has to say the right thing and and try to act like he's he's positive about the relationship and he he's supportive now. But I feel like he's already made enough statements that clearly suggest that he's done with Ben Simmons just as much as Ben Simmons is done with Philadelphia 76ers. So let me uh let me explain to you what Doc Rivers said. Um so I guess this was on a, he did an interview on CBS Sports, I believe it was, and uh, he made a a real weird comparison to the situation, and he said, um, he said, uh, basically, he said, there's times that I think we're getting through, but then he said, there's times that I feel like I'm talking to the people who still believe Donald Trump won the election, so I'm not sure, but I'm going to keep trying. And that's just kind of a weird thing for him to say, in my opinion. I feel like um, if you was trying to mend a relationship 
with your player or try to like convey a message that everything is cool. I don't think you would use Donald Trump as an analogy to suggest how the the business dealings are coming along. Like to me, I feel like that's just um, a statement that when he made that, I feel like Ben Simmons is going to look at that and, and just take that like all types of funny. Like I would take it that way. I would be like, what does he mean by that? Like, is he trying to like, you know what I'm saying? Like, is he trying to compare me to Donald Trump? Like what, like it's so many ways that you could take that negatively that I think if he actually did mean it in a positive way, it's definitely not going to be taken positively. And um, I wouldn't actually blame Ben Simmons for that. I feel like that's going to push him further away from the organization. Um, obviously, ultimately, I believe Ben Simmons is done. I believe that um, he's a little spoiled. Um, but I believe he needs a, a new start, man. Like I, Sometimes I think there's athletes that just need a new environment. They need new motivation. Um, I think Ben Simmons has been humbled. I'm not really sure if he feels that he's been humbled, but it looks like he's definitely been humbled. Like a lot of people are down on Ben Simmons. A lot of people think he's trash. Um, me personally, I don't think that he's trash. I think that he still can be a super productive player. I think he still could be an all-star um, because he's he actually is a really complete player. Um, he's able to get you 16 to 20 a game. Some nights he can go big. Um, he's able to get you... You know, he could get you 15 to 20 rebounds, but he's at least going to be able to grab you about 8 to 10 on a nightly basis. Um, he's also a super, like, solid defender, like all NBA. He's uh, led the league in steals before. Um, and rebound, like, he's tall. He's about six eight six nine. He can definitely go for a double-digit rebound. So I still think there's a lot of value in him as a player, and I think that – um if he actually was to get traded to the Denver Nuggets, I think it would be a nice fresh start for him. And I think he could help the franchise depending on, you know, who they had to trade, obviously, because I feel like um he could fit in real well with uh the Joker, the MVP. I think uh they're both super uh super great passers and uh I think that um they could work the offense really well together. And Jamal Murray, who, you know, primarily plays point guard, but is more of a natural score anyways, if they, were, if they were able to keep him in Denver without, you know, obviously I feel like he would probably be involved in the trade. But if any way possible they were to keep him and he could move to uh, being more of a natural scoring guard, he's um he's kind of had some up and downs in his career, but, you know, he's shown that he can go for big numbers consistently like he did in the playoffs against Donovan McNichol. Donovan Mitchell, they had uh, one of the one of the great showdowns in the playoffs where they both was dropping 40 to 50 on each other on a, night, on a nightly basis. So I think uh, Ben Simmons would actually fit really well in Denver um, depending on how they could keep the team constructed. They could make some, uh, some big noise and um, – they could challenge for the Western Conference uh, championship. But, um, yeah, I just uh, – I feel like, you know, if Philadelphia really is serious about keeping this man, I feel like they keep making statements and, and suggestions that are really uh, hurting the relationship a whole lot more than it's helping it. And, um, you know, Doc Rivers keeps acting like, yeah, you know – we're just going to go through the process and, you know, I think he said, uh, you know, in sports, you know, you see it a lot and it's been a whole lot of times where it's happened, but it's not been reported and guys are unhappy, but they come back ultimately. And, you know, so he's saying, just listen, we're going to go through it. We're going to always do what's best for the team. But I can tell you up front, we love that to get Ben back. And if we're going to, and we're going to keep trying to do that. Um, you know, Ben, he's, he's, he has a long contract left. So technically, you know, it's really up to Philadelphia how this is going to play out. Like, are they going to just give in and get the man out of there? Or are they going to hold on to him? Um, if it was me personally, 
you know, I understand that he has a, a lot left on his contract, but I would just try to move the man because I know at this point he's definitely dug in and he's willing to make a sacrifice. So I think um, he's definitely not planning on showing up. And, uh, it, yeah, I I feel like um we're going to just have to wait and see how much money Ben Simmons is, is uh, prepared to lose because um, October the 1st, it's probably going to be one of those dates where you really see like where his mind is because when October 1st hits, the team has to pay him 25% of his salary for the season. So if he misses that date and he misses 25% of his salary, that's going to be a big hit. Um, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if he showed up by then just to get that money. But then it, it wouldn't surprise me if he ultimately started to become a distraction again because I, I do believe he'll show up for that money. But then I do believe that um his heart won't be in it. He won't play well for the team. He might, you know, he might be be on the sidelines. But I just think ultimately it's going to hurt the team more to have him there than if they just go on and try to move him and, and get him somewhere else. Um, But, you know, at this point it's getting to, you know, it's getting to a, a situation where you're going to just have to wait and see what the money's looking like because, you know, he, his salary is going to afford him around $230,000 a game. So how, how, how far is he willing to go? How much of that is he willing to give up? Um, you know, ultimately he's rich. So I'm assuming he's probably financially in decent shape. I don't know how long he could afford to be missing, you know, half a million dollars a week. I don't I don't know if he's if he's good enough to be losing out on that type of money, but um I'm anxious to see what happens. I feel like um he still got some uh, gas left in the tank. I feel like he'll come out motivated to show people that um you know, he's not washed and I feel like once he gets out of Philly um hopefully he will have a a change of mind state and he'll be locked in and he'll be focused and he'll be ready to try to improve his game and he'll uh, leave you know a lot of the off-court distractions and um he'll get serious about basketball because I you know when he first came out of college everybody was calling him the next LeBron James and I mean he's not going to be the next LeBron James, obviously, but I still think he does still have Hall of Fame talent. Um, he's going to be able to, to get great numbers for the majority of his career, and uh, I think it's just up to him how great he can end up being. Like, if, if he takes basketball serious and he grinds and he uh, works on the, the holes in his game, he can be Hall of Fame great. And if he doesn't, he'll just be – another player that was solid but didn't reach his potential man so anyways let me know um how do y'all feel about this situation do y'all think Denver will be a good fit for him do you think the 76ers are trying to uh, get him back or do you think they secretly want him gone just as bad as he wants to leave man let me know what y'all think and we'll get back to it next time